So let's see what other types of resources are available. And some ideas are really quite simple, like removing your shoes. I mean, it's a common practice that's observed in Asia and Middle Eastern and, and Eastern European countries. And that's a good thing because think about it, in the US, they estimate that 74% of the households use an average of between three and four different pesticides. So while they say that one half of most lawn herbicides is about five weeks, the half-life about five weeks, you can still detect these herbicides in the soil one year after treatment. So you should be taking your shoes off before you come into the home, especially in the industries where you work. Always. In fact, they recommend that farmers take their clothing off at the job site and shower before coming home because the pesticides are so dangerous. But let's look at something else. Avoid breathing exhaust as much as you can. Wear that respirator. I see this all the time with snow blowers and leaf blowers. They don't protect themselves. You've got to protect yourselves. Wear that respirator. Go to OSHA, find out what you're supposed to be doing. I have to say that I see many of the people uh, in the building trades that do not protect themselves. It's, you know, you're a tough guy, nothing's gonna happen to you. But now that you know how dangerous the, that exposure to some of these chemicals are, really take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. For more links, visit the uh, Healthy Building Net, uh, Network, the Pharos Project. At the Healthy Building Network, they have over 163 chemicals and you can visit these links to find safer products. Um, this link, or we've got a couple of, of things going on here, Tree Hugger. They have an article that found that these five paints are the best zero VOC brands. And folks, as I mentioned, if you follow me on social media, I'm constantly every day, well, six days a week anyway, I take a day off on Sunday, but six days a week I'm posting on social media, a tip a day, a tip a day. So we've posted the five best carpetings. Here are the five best paints that have been uh, recently nominated. And on this particular slide, you can see that Earthweave has low emission uh, rugs and carpeting, organically dyed carpeting, whereas New World Climate also offers low VOC, natural fibers. And then they also have information on which adhesive to use when you're installing that carpet to get the safest possible uh, product from that. There are, of course, other websites to visit that provide information on safer building materials. And remember, these are just not just safer for the environment, not just safer for the people that are going to live in these new homes, live in these remodeled homes, but also you as a tradesperson, you have to protect yourself. So we've got Green Building Supply and the International Living Futures Institute. And folks, this is an amazing resource, resource from the National Institutes of Health and the National Library of Medicine. This link, What's in Products, you go there and you can search categories. You can look at not just uh, home rebuilding and remodeling, but you can find things from pesticides to landscaping, yard products, home maintenance, personal care products, all of these things, which is amazing because as I mentioned, when they were looking at the different chemicals in products, they don't have to list them on the label. They don't have to because it's not going on your body as a personal care product or in your mouth as food. There are no laws mandating what has to be listed on a cleaning product or an auto product or a home office product. So become familiar with this link. You can also go to the Center for Disease Control and they have what's called their exposure report. And you can see in the, in the red circle, uh, CDC exposure report, it was updated in January of 2019. But when you get to this link, you'll go under additional information to the chemical section and you'll find these chemical Fact sheets, you can kind of see an idea of what you can find over there. 
you can look at these chemicals and find out what it's doing to your body and, be, and educate yourself. You can also go to the National Resources Defense Council. That's an easy website. It's NRDC, NRDC for Natural Resources Defense Council. So NRDC.gov. And on that website, you can find links uh, to Cradle to Cradle, Home Free, Green Seal, uh, the Blue Green Alliance, and many other um, resources for you to find safer building products. And folks, you have to keep up with your education. This is a vast subject, and it's not something you can learn in just an hour webinar. So I urge you to become a green, uh, certified green home professional. It is the future. And, and, and not only do we owe it to these younger generations, but these younger generations coming in as they acquire uh, their, their finances and their, their savings and they want to build or remodel, that's the generation that knows what's going on. So we've got to keep that around. And I want you to just look around wherever you are right now and, and what do you see that isn't chemically manufactured. Of course, wood, right? But the finish was man-made. And the point of this webinar is this is that we must coexist with these chemicals. And I'm not saying that these chemicals aren't helpful. My goodness, they really are. I love that we have VOCs that are going to make rubber so that I can ride my bike with my husband on these amazing bike trails all over Michigan. I love the big plastic bin that holds my Legos that my son played with over 30 years ago. And without plastic, I wouldn't have my computer or my cell phone or my projector to teach when I go on the road. But we have to coexist. These pesticides help. Uh, to kill insects that transfer diseases, such as in the case of 2015, when the Zika virus was uh, creating birth defects in so many of those infants. What about triclosan? That's a surgical scrub. Personally, I'd like the physician to scrub before they do surgery. And BPA, BPA is a chemical that, of course, it, we find uh, bioaccumulative in the environment and in our bodies, but, but it gave us safety equipment for our children who are, are playing sports. And, and it gave my mother the iPad so that she can FaceTime with me at age 90. And I can FaceTime with my grandchildren and, and phthalates. Phthalates allowed the medical staff to administer IV and oxygen when my little granddaughter needed it the most. Uh, she was quite ill in the hospital. Phthalate contamination was the furthest thing from my mind. And I was actually grateful for that chemical. So know that this paradigm is shifting. Dr. Paul Anastas heads the Center for Green Chemical and Engineering at Yale University. And he says the chemicals can be designed with an appropriate lifestyle. And the case in point is the plethora of new construction materials coming out that are less toxic and that this shift is creating jobs and, and the fields are now offering excellent opportunities for these young millennials to get involved at both an occupational level as well as on a personal level. Because folks, you're going to be building for these millennials someday. When the book was being written, or I think it was actually written and my publicist recommended that we do a national survey of millennials. And what we found is that 88% of these millennials are concerned about reducing exposure. Yeah, there's a gap that's existing between uh, their concerns regarding exposure and their ability to reduce that toxic load. But these are the folks that you're going to be building for and designing for in the future. Wangari Mathai is a well-known Kenyan environmental activist, and I love her beautiful saying that the generation that destroys the environment is not the generation that's going to pay the price, and that is the problem. We are all responsible for what has happened so far, and we are all responsible to take action for those future generations. I don't know, who do you want to protect? 
You're looking at the side of who I want to protect, create a better world for. It's my grandchildren, my great grandchildren someday because they didn't ask for this. They don't deserve it. And we need to help spread the word. So again, follow me on social media, visit my website for more links to education, go to my YouTube channel, which you can access on my website. All of those links are accessible on my website. So again, this might not have been the most uplifting of all messages, but folks, this is real. And this is where you have a tremendous responsibility in building and designing to create safer places for future generations, as well as protect yourself from this environmental exposure. So become a green homes, a certified green home professional because now you know what's at stake. Brett, I'm turning it back over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Cindy. And um, thank you all for joining us here. And we do have some time for questions. And um, before we get to those questions, um, I do wanna again remind everyone that we, um, we do have a winner to announce of um, your body's environmental chemical burden uh, listed up there, uh, Cindy's book, we have one right here. And that winner, uh, if he's here, is uh, David Gard of the Michigan Energy Efficiency Contractor Association. So David, if you are still here with us, just chime in on the chat box and let us know that you are listening. And we'll give you one second just to make sure. And do you, uh, Jessica, do you see him on the attendee list? Well, he may have, uh, he may have took off. All right, well, uh, we do have a, we do have a, uh, a backup winner though here. So just give me one second, wasn't anticipating that. All right, so our second place winner is um, Herbert. Uh, I think it's um, uh, Bowen. Are you still here with us? Yeah, I believe you are. So uh, congratulations. We will uh, we will get this out to you. Uh, we'll contact you through email and get your um, get your contact information. So thank you for joining us and congrats on that. So. Yeah, we do have some uh, some more time here for questions. And so before we get to those questions, one other thing uh, to go over, uh, just real quick, um, make sure to take that survey that pops up at the end of this session or that's emailed to you an hour later. It's the same survey, just take it once. Um, for those of you watching in the future on demand, you need to take that quiz with an 80% passing rate um, to get that. And then, um, uh, to uh, access the quiz on our website, head down, click the YouTube button, and then on the left there, click show more. And on the right, you can go in and click the access link to download the quiz and get your CEUs uh, for the future. And then just also real quick, uh, thanks again to our board of directors, our volunteers, uh, our nearly 100 members, and our top tier sponsors, Panasonic, Smart, uh, Cosmos Ventilation, T-Stud, Structurally Insulated Framing Systems, and Mitsubishi for going all electric, uh, net zero in single family, multifamily, and commercial building. Um, thanks to all of them. So yeah, uh, I do see the um, questions rolling in here. Um, and a couple of them, first about the slides, um, we will uh, have those, those slides were emailed out. So. Uh, make sure to check your spam and they should also be uploaded here so you can grab it right here if you want to access those. Um, the next question is safety data sheets and MSDS, I believe that is material safety data sheets, also show chemicals and products and also the health uh, product data, data sheets, HPDs. Um, so it looked like more of a comment than a question, but Cindy, maybe um, you can uh, just talk to us a little bit about, um, you know, 
are those conventional sheets that have to come with the product, you know, giving us all the information, um, you know, that we would need. There you go. I was going to say I'm I'm muted here, Brett. Um, I can tell you that the um, MSDS sometimes uh, they just don't let you have access to all of those um, um, those sheets. In fact, uh, sometimes uh, if you go to um, MSDS.com, you're allowed to have five views free and if you want to have access to the uh data uh the database it's 199 dollars a year so this is why i gave the the free uh, web links to check on these chemicals um so yes the msds is going to list all the chemicals but also the links that i gave you specifically to the national library of medicine the nih link that also will show you all the uh, information Great, yeah. Um, and uh, I I wonder about um, you know what your what your thoughts are on just you know whether the information's out there versus you know some kind of uh, actual third party testing facility. Um, you know what's the importance of that? Well, sure, because the manufacturer typically will say it's safe, and they tend to do that. So you just have to be careful, and, and having things verified third party is always very good. There's a, a group called the Environmental Working Group, EWG.org, and they have a tremendous amount of information on their website on, on safety of products. Also, Ann Arbor, uh, Michigan, we have the Ecology it's called Healthy Stuff, the Ecology Center, Healthy Stuff. They do a very good job on their materials as well, uh, checking things. They're the ones that did the vinyl flooring study and the carpeting study. So having a third party, usually even a nonprofit organization is really wonderful because it, nothing, you know, it, it, they don't have any stake in the results. They just want to show uh, the truth about what's going on with this stuff. So there are a lot of really good ones out there. Um, there's one called Good Guide. Uh, there are, are many, many different, I, I can't even begin to list them all, but uh, yeah, there's plenty of good resources out there for people. Yeah, and I'm glad you, you brought up the worker safety as well. I think that's um, very important. I don't know if you remember, I think it was just recently there was a large study that came out um, that I think had to do with countertops and uh, exposure to cutting in that in that regard. Are you familiar with that? I didn't see that study, but I did see one on paint thinners. And on paint thinners, they're now trying to ban the chemical that killed 31 people. One of them was a, an employee that was installing uh, something they were installing something then they were using this product and they had a ventilator you know ventilator on or I mean a respirator not a ventilator a respirator on and they actually died they had all the protective clothing on in fact four people in Michigan died and so there's a big huge push to get this chemical out of paint thinners and luckily places like Lowe's and Home Depot and even Amazon are, are banning products with that chemical in there. But again, see what happens is these chemicals are brought to market, they're in a product and they're never tested for safety. That doesn't necessarily happen in the food industry. Like they'll test it at least for 30 days before it comes out, which really isn't enough either. But um, these chemicals that they're, they're manufacturing just left and right, there's just no time for the EPA to go through all these chemicals. And then it also depends on uh, uh, let's, how can I say this without being political? Who is, is, is running the country and how much financing and how much influence one would have uh, to, to fund the EPA with people who are interested in protecting the environment and people. So that can be a problem as well. And it looks like the, 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 there was a follow-up comment that they were installing some kind of renovations for renovations coatings in the bathtubs uh, as uh -huh. a prep chemical. So yeah, that was uh -huh. they're just following up on that. So um, yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, 
one other thing I, uh, I, you had mentioned um, exposure, especially to like uh, those who are doing more of the maintenance side, or I guess even construction where you've got sure. um, gas, uh, gas fired um, equipment um, and that, you know, just having the exposure to the, to the combustion from that. So, you know, here we're, we always get pretty excited about the idea of, of multiple benefits of the sort of electrification movement. So I guess just your general thoughts there on how, you know, using electrical equipment might be able to help reduce exposure. Oh, well, absolutely it reduces exposure. I mean, without a doubt. As I mentioned, I, I, I see people that have these, you know, they're spraying trees with these huge hoses and they have no protective equipment on none i see leaf blowers you know with that thing on their back and the exhaust is coming and they're blowing things snowmobile people riding snowmobiles one behind the other breathing all of that exhaust it's you're driving in traffic with the outdoor air on and you're sitting in traffic and you're outdoor and your your engine is just sucking in those uh, fumes and you're sitting in your car and you're breathing them it really becomes quite an adventure <laughs> when you have this knowledge to look around and see where you're being exposed and how you can can really stop you know the exposure and, and what you can do to help you know not breathe as much of it or rub it on your body or whatever so yeah great um well i uh at this point we are a little over time and i uh i do not see any other questions so Cindy, just real quick before we wrap up, where can people go to find your book, find more information and or get a hold of you if they'd like to? It's right there on the website, cindyclement.com. It's got links to everything to contact me, links to the book, links to additional information, education. It's all there. It's just cindyclement.com. Perfect. And I wanted to second you too on the other comment you made where um, I do follow Cindy on LinkedIn, and she posts some fascinating stuff that uh, I learn a lot from. So make sure Thank to check. Her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Check. You know, just she's just helping you stay in touch if you're if you're interested in in um, these concerns. So, Cindy, I really appreciate your time. Um, thanks for coming out, and um, take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your week. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Be sure to check out all of our courses available online that you can watch anytime and anywhere to pick up your CEUs. Before you go, make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get weekly updates and stay up to date on green building science courses, webinars, and home tours. Thanks again.